All right, so I'm gonna talk about Merlin. Merlin is a package that was developed first in Stata by Michael Crather, uh, which is my supervisor in Leicester. And after a while, Emma joined us and she started working on the R version of Merlin. And unfortunately, she couldn't be here, so I'll be presenting on her behalf. Um, yeah, Merlin. Merlin stands for Multivariate Mixed Effects Regression for linear, nonlinear, and user-defined models. And the motivation behind uh, the development of this package is that uh, nowadays there's a much uh, higher amount of data and we have, uh, we have loads of electronic health records that are available to use for research purposes. And within this kind of data, uh, there's a strong um, there's a strong and obvious multi-level structure. For instance, we have biomarkers that could be biomarker values that could be nested within patients, which are nested within GP practice areas, and so on and so forth. On top of that, we also often often find uh, several kind of outcomes that are related between each other in this kind of uh, in this kind of data. For instance. We have biomarkers, multiple biomarkers that are recorded over time, and often we have information on survival endpoints, such as um, time to death, time to relapse of a given disease, and so on. <coughs> this framework ties very nicely within the framework of joint longitudinal and survival models. Um, the idea behind joint longitudinal and survival models is really simple. Um, for instance, we have, uh, say we have uh, lo one longitudinal biomarker here that is repeated measure, uh, that is measured repeatedly over time. Um, and we also have a survival outcome of interest, say time to death. And these two distinct outcomes are modeled jointly and they inform each other in the sense that, uh, as we can see here, uh, patient 98 has a much uh, has an increasing uh, slope for the values of the biomarker, and in fact, the predicted survival is much higher compared to patient 253, that has <coughs> excuse me uh, lower values of the biomarker, and therefore the predicted survival is 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 much lower. Um, there's a there are several packages that can fit joint longitudinal and survival models. There's STJM and GSEM in STATA, there's Frailty Park in R, there's Joiner and Joiner ML, and there's JM and JM Base, among others. Um, what we want to do with Merlin, though, is actually try to incorporate some of the, of the several extensions uh, to this framework that, that have been suggested in the literature. For instance, in the past years, um, this framework have been, have been, has been extended to accommodate competing risks, different types of outcomes, multiple continuous outcomes, delayed entry, um, recurrent events and terminal events at the same time, and loads of clinically meaningful predictions. <coughs> um, and as I said before, uh, the packages that I, that I described in the previous slides can fit some of the models, but some of the extensions are are not easily um, applicable in, in, in practice if you want to fit these kind of models to the data that you have. So Merlin, as I, as I said before, there's a tutorial paper in Stata that illustrates the framework and also um, some, of, um, some of the models that you can fit within this framework. And on Michael's website, there's loads of tutorial if you want to go and check them out. And I will essentially go through the same example that is described in Stata in the paper that is mentioned here uh, using R, using the R version. <coughs> and to do this, uh, we'll use data on prim primary biliary cirrhosis uh, as an example. Um, it's a data set that is often used in the settings of joint modeling to illustrate models. Um, it consists of 312 patients with this specific disease um, 158 of them were randomized to receive uh, deep penicillamine, and 154 were randomized to placebo. The survival outcome is all-cause mortality, and there are 140 events. 
Uh, for purpose of illustration, we simulate computer risks of death. Um, so there will be multiple, um, uh, multiple causes of death. And we have almost 2,000 repeated measurements of serum bilirubin and uh, other longitudinal biomarkers such as um, prothrombin index and so on. Uh, for, um, a version of this data set that is, format, that is uh, properly formatted to be used with Merlin is available uh, within the, the Merlin package in R. Uh, this is just an example of how the data looks like and how it has to be formatted. Um, this is the survival information that we have, and this is just for three patients. Um, we have the survival time, and then we have um, an event indicator for death. Uh, and we also have the, the computer risk uh, event indicators here. Um, we have to include only a single, um, within each individual, each survival time has to appear only once, as otherwise it would be considered to be some sort of recurrent events data, as Merli can also handle uh, multiple, events, uh, multiple events data, such as um, survival models with frailties and so on. Uh, and this is the longitudinal uh, data that we have. We have the time at which each measurement was taken, and then we have the value of uh, serum bilirubin and the value of prothrombin index on the log scale. We can start uh, with Merlin, and to begin with, we can fit just a simple linear model. It is really straightforward to fit this kind of model. We just call Merlin, we define the model, uh, we define time var. In this case, it's not necessary, but uh, later on we'll see that we actually have to define ta w what is the variable that represents time. We define uh, the family. We choose Gaussian as uh, we assume it's a, it's a linear model for continuous outcome. And then we define uh, which data set we're using. We can extend this model by uh, using a flexible formulation of time. For instance, we can use uh, restricted cubic splines using three degrees of freedom. And uh, all we have to do is to use the RCS function on the right-hand side of the formula. We can also include uh, a random intercept and turn this model into a MixFX model. Uh, MixFX are defined by uh, capital M followed by a number. And then between uh, square brackets, we need to include the variable that identifies the level at which we assume this random effect is, uh, is placed. Uh, we use the notation star one to constrain the um, coefficient associated to the random effect to one. And in fact, we, we, are, not, we are not estimating a, a coefficient for this random effect. Uh, in addition to the previous model, here we have to define uh, which is the variable that defines um, the nesting structure, essentially the, um, the, 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 the clustering. We can extend this model further. We can include a random slope. In this case, we have two random effects, M1 and M2. Uh, and the second random effect, M2, interacts with time. And in this model, we are assuming that the, um, the two random effects are independent. But we can relax this assumption and ask the program to estimate uh, and to assume an unstructured uh, variance covariance matrix for the random effects. And this will essentially estimate a correlation coefficient between M1 and M2 as well. Uh, moving on to the joint longitudinal survival framework, we have to include uh, a model for the survival part of the, of the model. Several uh, standard parametric survival models are included in Merlin. For instance, the Weibull exponential and Gompertz models are easily um, implement, uh, implementable and usable. And it's also possible to use a variety of more flexible models, such as the royston Palmer flexible parametric models on the log cumulative hazard scales, and also a model with restricted cubic splines on the log hazard scale. In order to um, add the survival model, we essentially have to add another family. In this case, we add Weibull, as we are fitting a Weibull model. And uh, here, it should be highlighted in red, but this new uh, equation is added in a list structure, and this is a survival model 
for uh, the survival time as time, the event indicator died, and we include treatment as a covariate um, in the survival submodel. Um, by doing this, we can, uh, within the joint longitudinal survival model, we can link the, the survival and the longitudinal model by including the expected value of the longitudinal biomarker. Uh, in this, uh, by doing this, essentially the two models are, are, are linked and we, can, we get an estimated hazard ratio or coefficient for a one unit increase in the longitudinal biomarker. Um, in order to do this, now we have to add um, S time on the time var option, as this will be, will be required to essentially match time in the longitudinal model and the survival time in the survival model. Several association structures are implemented. EV stands for expected value, which links the expected value or the current value of the longitudinal biomarker and includes it in the survival submodel. We can also use DEV, which stands for the derivative of the, expected, um, of the longitudinal submodel, and that represents essentially the rate of change in the biomarker, and we get an association between the rate of change in log bilirubin and survival. We can use IEV, which stands for integrated uh, and represents the cumulative effect of the biomarker. And we can also use combination of both. So we're not restricted to just a single um, association, association structure. Um, yeah, so we'll focus on this simple model and we will continue from here. What we can do is introduce time-dependent effects. For instance, uh, we can introduce an interaction between uh, treatment and um, a function of time. We use the, um, the function FP, which stands for uh, fractional polynomials, and to the power of zero, which is the log of time. So by doing this, essentially, we introduce an interaction between uh, treatment and the logarithm of the survival time. Uh, we can also, as I mentioned before, uh, include competing, um, competing risks. So in this case, we are fitting uh, two survival models. We have two equations, one for the risk of dying uh, because of cancer, and one because of uh, the risk of dying for other reasons. On top of that, uh, we decided that the risk of uh, dying from other causes is modeled using a flexible parametric model in which the, the, um, the baseline hazard is modeled using um, a restricted cubic spline. And in this case, we assume three degrees of freedom for simplicity. And uh, we can define this by adding the family RP to the, um, to the family option. We could also add uh, a second longitudinal biomarker. Uh, for instance, here we add the, log, um, the logarithm of prothrombin index. And once again, we model this flexibly using restricted cubic splines. Um, and we include a random intercept, uh, again, at the ID level that is identified by uh, the M3 um, term. And again, we can also include um, this biomarker. In, uh, we can include the association between this biomarker and, uh, in this case, the risk of dying because of cancer, the, um, the survival submodel. Uh, for the risk of cancer, and we include the expected value and the cumulative value, the cum cumulative effect, effect. So this is the final model that we, that we can fit. And this, um, as, as, as we saw, we can essentially, within this framework, we can start from a very simple model and end up with um, a model with um, a multivariate longitudinal outcome and two competing risks. Uh, model using co-specific hazards model, and all of these is modeled jointly at the same time. Um, what we can get as well, and is really important, is clinically meaningful predictions. For instance, uh, starting from the model that we fit, the final model that I showed in the previous slide, we can use the predict function, and uh, we could predict something like the cumulative, is, the, cum the marginal co-specific cumulative, cumulative incidence function, which will tell us the probability of dying 
uh, of a given cause in the presence of a competing event. And uh, we can just obtain these predictions using uh, this simple command. And if we add the marginal option, uh, we integrate out the random effects and we can interpret them as population average predictions. And then we can obtain a plot like this that shows that over time, um, the probability of dying because of cancer or the probability of dying because of other causes in the treated group um, is uh, these values here that we can see in this plot. Um, the future of Merlin, <laughs> about the future of Merlin, there's lots of things that, um, that the Stata version can do and the R version will uh, be able to do hopefully very soon. Um, and we're working to implement dynamic risk predictions, uh, modeling the observation process. Um, one of the downsides of Merlin though is that it's really flexible and therefore it can be slower than other packages, but the, the great power of Merlin is its flexibility and the capability of, of fitting all this complex model within a single framework. Um, another topic that we would like to explore is penalization. Uh, the Stata version can do that, the R version not yet. Um, we're working on uh, scalability and the use of sample weights and mimicking some sort of uh, uh, case cohort design uh, to essentially overcome the fact that with healthcare records you have millions and millions of, of, of observations. And generally updates and tutorials are updated all the time and you can find them on uh, Michael's website. Thank um, you very much. Yeah, Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so who has the most important question? Uh, could you include, like, say, five biomarkers? And also, if you have a missing values for the biomarkers, would that work? Uh, so, um, missing values are um, essentially accommodated by default within the mixed modeling framework. So you don't have to worry about, about that. And the, f the problem with including several biomarkers is that the dimension of the variance covariance metrics for the random effects grows exponentially, especially if you want to assume uh, that they can be correlated. Hence, it will become um, incredibly slow to fit, to fit this kind of model. Uh, imagine with um, maybe 2,000 observations and for random effects, it can take a couple of days to fit the model. So, yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the big limitation of this, of this framework. Well, it easily takes five years to collect the data, so you can spend a week on the yeah, calculations. Yeah, true. Okay. Yeah. okay.